Hi, sorry I'm a bit late, everyone. Uh, just getting my slides up here, and we can get started. Let's see. Okay, great. Uh, hi, welcome everybody. Um, I'm uh, I'm Thad Roebuck. I'm from the uh, the support team, and welcome to the Thursday uh, lunch and learn Q and A. Um, we already have one pre submitted question, I believe. Uh, before we go through that and answer any other questions, I just want to cover uh, the announcements that we have. Um, let's see. Um. Oh, hey, Jason. Hey, Radley. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, oh, uh, Radley, raise your hand. Let me just... Hey there, Radley. Hey, Pat. Um, so I have a, uh, I have a data type with a, a name and a date, and the date is marked as PII um, yeah. and uh, allows null value. Okay. When I try to report on that data type, um, and you know, I, I pick the calculated column encrypted or PI data. I get an error back that the system doesn't allow nullable values. Um, didn't know if there was a way around that or what, what my options are to be able to report that, that date field, um, when it's set PII, uh, and allow null value. Interesting. Yeah, that might be, hmm. So we're trying to report on that uh, that field, and it's uh, it's nullable. We want it to be nullable, uh, but also it does have to be uh, marked as PII. Yeah. Um, I think that could be uh, a product limitation. Um, I, okay. I, I potentially that could be a uh, a feature request. Um, I've never worked with the uh, the the mark as PII uh, feature before on those. Okay. Uh, those report columns. Um, so off the top of my head, I don't know uh, functionally how that would work. Um, but I can definitely uh, definitely test that um, and see if uh, see if potentially um, there, there is a workaround there. Or if it's not, uh, then then I'm sure we can get a feature request in for that. Um, I, I don't think uh, I don't think it would be impossible to overcome. It just might not be something that, that we can work around through the UI. There might need to be some code changes to uh, to accomplish that. Okay. All right. Um, should I submit a ticket for that? Um, yeah, I, th I think that would, okay. I think that would be best. Um, okay. I was going to say I could submit a ticket for you, but you probably, uh, you probably know your use case best. Um, but I, uh, I can check after the, the meeting as well and, uh, just, uh, just assign it to myself and, and get working on that for you. Um, awesome. so off the top of my head, I don't know how to do it, but, uh, I think after asking the developers, I'm sure there's, there's something we could work out. Great. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So we've also got uh, we've got some announcements. I just want to cover really quickly here. Let's see. Uh, and before we get to the uh, Q and A, I'm just going to go through these. We just have a few. Um, so just announcing um, end of life support. Um, as of uh, as of June first this year, uh, we have total cessation of end of life support for version six. Um, I think it, pretty much everybody is is either on the path to or has already completed an upgrade to version eight. Uh, but just putting this announcement out to make sure that everybody's um, everybody's pushing towards V eight because we're uh, we're ceasing that end of life support for for six. Um, and you can ca contact your customer success manager if you're not already on that path uh, to get started there. Uh, we have another product roadmap coming out uh, September 7th. Um, and then every other Thursday from 11 to 12, uh, you can join for that uh, that webinar for the product roadmap um, and see what's next with the product. I think that is it for announcements here. Um, let me just cover this question from Jason. Okay. Okay, so in a previous session this week, I asked about making an environment read-only using the preview functionality. Okay, the team runs reports and unit tests. 
appears to make some kind of change, modifies dates and times. Thoughts? Let's see. Um, I'm not sure I'm familiar with that request um, here. Uh, Jason, would you be able to uh, clarify a bit on the, the use case for this, uh, this read-only environment here? Uh, yeah, um, I, th I, th I think it was Monday. It was either Monday or Tuesday. Got it. Uh, we discussed about a read-only environment because what's happening is when we go to deploy from our authoring environment down to say like QA or staging, yep. we're often often our flows, what we're deploying is hitting you know, some kind of discrepancy and we're having to tell it no override or some of the discrepancies are such that you know, we can't override it. And we're thinking there's something that the team is doing, like saying QA, yep. uh, that's maybe setting a new date and time, you know, doing something such that it sees a discrepancy between our authoring and the QA environment. We're having these collisions constantly because um, at this time we're having to deploy our entire products, our entire flows. Right. So it was um, mentioned that you know, possibly, maybe in a future release, there'll be the concept of read only, but there is a preview functionality to go preview all these things. And Leah came back and said, well, we do run reports and we do run unit tests. Could these be contributing to the issues we're having? So I, I was, as I wrote that down and thought about it, I'm like, you know, with that, I'm, I'm wondering if this maybe should just be a support request to actually show you guys on a deployment these various collisions we're getting. I mean, when we deploy from authoring down to our other environments, we shouldn't have any collisions. It should be a pretty simple go. Yeah. So we're, we're apparently doing something all the time that's causing uh, different levels of collisions. Yeah. I, I would imagine there's something in the process there that is changing a uh, some metadata on a on a deeper level than just like a you know modified date or created on date um, yeah. that could be causing those collisions there. Um, I think it is probably you know buried somewhere in your in your projects um, or just inherent to the the way that you're uh, you're deploying. Um, and I think it I think it probably would be a worthwhile uh, okay. support request um, because there's definitely Oh, we're causing those those collisions, especially when like checking out from the repository. There, there are tons of different things uh, that can be happening there. Um, okay. And it's it's a bit difficult to know without getting you know kind of getting our hands dirty in the environment and uh, sort of figuring out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Just um, no, no. Sounds like a great plan because we had a great example today of we literally in a staging environment had to remove all the flows on uh, for that product folder. You know, all the flows for that folder and just redeploy it from scratch. Oh gosh, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, the things were missing and we couldn't resolve the issues. You know, the lo the local was problems. Okay, yeah. Well, um, I'll work with Leah to to set up a re request where she can demonstrate that. I appreciate okay. it. Yeah, of course, no problem. And we are looking forward to um, what is on the pro product roadmap in version eight uh, or future version nine um deployment server? Is it? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I've heard I've heard talk about it. And I haven't looked into it too much myself, but I know there are a lot of uh, a lot of pretty new exciting features like that coming yeah. in nine. Um, and among those is, like you said, um, the uh, the ability to make an environment read only, um, which uh, I think has been requested by a few other customers, and that that will definitely uh, I think address kind of the issue that you're having here as well. But that's of course later down the line. Thank you, sir. I'll follow up with Leah, and we'll. Um engage with support when we're ready. Perfect. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Um we had a pre-submitted question uh from Manal and I don't believe she's here. Um if there are any other uh questions from anybody at this time. Oh yeah, Vladimir, great. Um okay. Hey, Vladimir, how are you? Hey, I'm not sure I can hear you if you're talking. Um, I believe I've given you permission to talk.
Yes. Uh, yeah, Vladimir, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having trouble um, hearing you on my end. Uh, would you be able to uh, type your question in the chat or the Q&A section? Okay, got it. One sec. Understood. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me okay? Excellent. Thank you uh, for uh, for waiting for me. I'm having a trouble. Uh, I'm trying to build uh, the truth table from the CSV file. Yep. I created a um, um, database structure with uh, two strings. Okay. And one decimal. But I am not able to link decimal in the true table. Uh, no decimal integer. Sorry, I'm not able to uh, link integer with the uh, with the true table on when you mapping the the columns. Got it. Yeah, and this is I believe this is an issue I ran into a while ago testing this out myself. Um, we support. Um, I believe the the data types that we support for an external truth table are going to be, I think, pretty much exclusively string and decimal. Um, integers, um, I think, in previous versions caused pretty unexpected behavior, mm -hmm. um, and I think in in more recent versions uh, we just can't map them into. Are you talking about like uh, you're trying to add them as uh, as as columns to the external truth table report, and that's just not working for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so I I thought that there's gonna be some uh, bug or something like that. Okay. So may I have another question then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I already had a chat with the this uh, about this with the Jared. I'm sending him a sample. Okay. Uh, but I'm not sure he didn't reply to me so far. So I'm just wondering. Uh, can I get uh, multiple inputs to the true table? I mean, uh, multiple inputs to, are you talking about still like an external truth table or just? Um, to external, any... yeah, to external. Like, Got uh, it. let's imagine that I have uh, the column one. Yeah. Uh, let's call it category. I have, uh, I have uh, like uh, four A answers and four B answers. And for that, and in the column B, let's say product option, I have uh, uh, linked the <clears throat> four A answers and four B answers. And uh, the output uh, should be uh, a number. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I don't know, how to go through the API? How should I get multiple answers uh, for one input? I'm, I was thinking of if, the, if if I can uh, create some loop, like each uh, each part of the payload will be run separately. But I still don't know what, what approach should I take, or should I split? uh the true table in the part like uh, only a answers and uh, and link to them those the, that second column and then... i think i think that would be a, a a possible solution is kind of creating like you're saying uh two truth tables there um i guess uh question is are there uh you so said there, there are multiple uh, outputs there. Is it always like a, a fixed amount of multiple outputs? Um, or does it kind of, does it vary depending on uh, what paths we go down? Because if it's a fixed amount, I do believe we can just add, uh, we can add output columns there. Um, or if, if that doesn't work, then we could maybe also output just a, a list of the answers um, and then process those uh, you know, later in your process, uh, whatever you're doing with those answers from there. It is possible to replicate it now really quickly? Uh, yeah, definitely. We can try that. Um, I don't know. I don't have a source for um, uh, for an external truth table on hand, but we can definitely, like, we can definitely go through it. Um, 
with a, a regular truth table. And then I believe they should have the same uh, functionality. The only difference there is the, uh, the way that, um, the way that we get the inputs and the outputs through. I will share in, um, am I, I hope I'm able, I'm not able to share. Um, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately we don't do, uh, we don't do screen shares on the lunch and learn. I think to kind of keep questions briefer. Um, I wanted to send you print screen, uh, in the chat. Oh, I, I yeah, I believe that should be fine. Um, just a, a screenshot I think would, would give a little clarity. Mm -hmm, but this is not working for me for some reason. Oh, it's not working. Okay. Um, well, you can see my screen, so I guess, um, so we have a, so we have like a category, mm -hmm. right? This is, uh, about how we have this set up. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll just say, pardon me, I've just got to slide my zoom controls up here. Mm -hmm. Category mm -hmm. equals something. Um, and we have some other rule that I guess we're running. Um, so you're saying, uh, you want to add multiple outputs to a truth table like this, like, uh, based on if category equals this, and then this other rule verb, we want to output, um, yeah, I should, I should give the, the payload from the Jira that, the uh, the category is the, the name of the question yeah. the, from the form. Okay. And, uh, and uh, let's say product uh, will be in the column uh, in the second column. Okay. And uh, and those product uh, could be anything. So let's say uh, uh, if you will add it into a category like a uh, question A. Oh, Q1, yeah, question A. Yeah, we have like a question A and a question B category, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And, and then uh, we have like different products. Yeah, and for example, okay, let's add the question C and I will receive the... No, no, no. Oh, okay. Sorry, my bad. But the uh, oh, no question A. Over there, three question A's. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, but I think we might just have to three question A. Mm -hmm. Right, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can put a uh, three question B, and I should receive in one payload, uh, in one payload, like uh, two answers for question A. Got it. So. At question A, this product, we should get two answers. Yeah, so it could be product one, product two, product three, product four, and I will get, I will get the. Uh... Okay. Yeah, so we and get that... like two answers okay. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and each of the each of the the product has different score. Okay. Um, yeah, we can model that uh, at some point. But so your question was specifically just how do we get multiple answers? Is that right? Yeah. How how do I how what the pay, how the pay, payload should look like if I will get or how to process it? Uh, two multiple A question and for example one B question altogether. Oh, got it. So are we just we're just passing. Um... We're just passing multiple uh, sets of input, uh, mm -hmm. and then we want to get multiple sets of answers all at once. Yeah, I think we would need to. Um, I think we would need to do some kind of iteration. Um, like we would need, we would need some kind of uh, some kind of for each loop. And uh, I'm not sure how you're calling this. If it's a if it's a flow, or it's you were saying something about an external API call. Mm -hmm. um, but we would probably just need to iterate through the input list. And pass mm -hmm. each one uh, through um, through the truth table individually um, before eventually uh, passing out all of the outputs. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think 
uh, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think we can pass multiple inputs to this truth table at once unless we built the entire thing to have um, lists here. But I think that that logic would be pretty difficult to build. And I think the thing that makes the most sense is just to uh, loop through with each individual um, uh, whatever the structure is you're passing through here that has a, a question mm -hmm. and a product and a score, uh, mm -hmm. process one of those and then loop through and process the next one and then loop through and process the third one and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try to use a loop. So in this case, I'm just wondering how the how the payload, the uh, JSON should look like. So is that okay if I, okay, let's say we have a column category equal and I will... Uh, make subcategory like question A and then multiple answer, okay. Can you show me how to set it up a, a loop? Sure, yeah, so within a within a flow, we can do something like, um, if I just create a flow here. Okay, I can play that, I can play with that uh, through the integration. Great. Yep. Yeah, we can definitely like if you want to if we wanted to call this as an API service, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have these all these different step inputs. Um, or really, I guess it would be we'd have like just passing some input list in, um, and we could we could call this just a list of strings for now for convenience. But this would just be whatever structure you're using. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry so much to this is kind of theoretical, but since, since, you know, I can't, uh, I don't have hands on your project. We can't like, uh, we can't walk through this entire mm -hmm. thing right now, but we've just got say like this collection of, um, all these different structures. And then we would have a, uh, a run truth table step here. Uh, mm -hmm. and then the source would just be whatever, whatever truth table you're using, uh, to process these, um, and then just go back to the loop. If there's other extra processing you need to do after the truth table, right? Like you say, you need to then say something to the database. Um, we could have a step after that that handles processing. Uh, this doesn't have an So outcome. variables uh, should be, uh, I mean, uh, talking about the structure, uh, the given input should be list. Um, yes, yeah. So if you're, if you're doing a, a loop through here, then I think, um, I think we should have, I think the best way to do it would be to have a list and then you can pass, uh, you can pass a list in through the API call. Um, I already but, tried uh, to use uh, variables as a list, but uh, uh, it, uh, it processed like uh, all the list in one. So when I, I'll debug it, uh, the truth table, I had that question A as a one answer. Okay, I will test it. I will test it with the loop. Maybe the loop will do some magic over there. Okay, so loop needs to be front of the truth table, and then we will go back to the to the stuff. Yep. Um, and it it does like it sounds like we're getting kind of into the particulars of uh of your project mm -hmm. here. So if you if you end up going back and trying this, um. And it and it doesn't work, then absolutely please do uh, submit a support ticket, and then we can get somebody on a call where you can actually share your screen, and we can go through your process and look at the particulars and and kind of get this figured out in more detail. Um, but I hope this at least illustrates, um, you know, kind of an, an approach we can try here. Mm -hmm. So, what parameters should be in the loop? Um, so just whatever. Um, so there there are these uh, these mm -hmm. item parameters uh, and this this list. Um, so pretty much all you need to do is, is pass the list. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not like a, it's not like a for loop that does a fixed count. It's just a for each. Um, and we have the item index handled here. Um, so all you need to pass in is the collection and we'll take care of everything from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll try to replicate this. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Well, let's hope that will work this solution. Yeah, absolutely. And then if, if not, then absolutely please do contact support and we can get somebody to, to help you out further with, uh, was setting that up. Um, more than thankful. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. No problem. Okay. Um, if 
nobody has uh, any more questions for the moment. We had a, a pre-submitted question and the submitter um, hasn't, uh, I don't think has arrived yet. Um, but I do want to, uh, I want to go through it because we do, we do post the recordings here. So at the very least uh, we can go through that. And I think it's a, it's a useful um, exercise in any event. Um, so the question was, um, let's just see here. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, and the question was, uh, how do I, how do I reassign an assignment? Um, or how do I create a user action uh, so that we can reassign a task without having to go to the process folder for the task? Um, I think it's a good question. Uh, so I have a simple project here. Uh, basically all we're doing is, and I can show you the data structure really quickly. Um, we have a flow execution extension here. Uh, it's just a, a wrapper for a timestamp. That's all like the, the contents of this aren't really relevant to what we're doing. I just needed uh, a data structure that we could actually uh, set up a process folder for. Um, so I have this simple uh, flow execution extension generation flow. Uh, all we're doing is getting a Unix timestamp uh, to pass into the flow execution extension. We're setting up a process folder. Um, we're giving it an ID, we're setting the state, and then it has a, an assignment form. Uh, and the form is very simple. It's just a single button. Uh, and then when that button is pressed, we complete the assignment, we set the state to complete, and we, uh, we finish out the, the process. So it's fairly simple. It's just kind of, uh, to create a, an example of a process folder. Um, and basically uh, what we're gonna do here is we have this dashboard that shows all of our processes. Um, I've already created one. I'll just create a new one in front of you here. Just so you can see that this is all working. So if I run this flow, um, it just assigns something to me. I'm not going to complete it right now, but if we look at this dashboard, um, this, is, uh, this is the most recent. I can expand this a bit. So we can see this 16 is, is a bit more recent here. This is the one I just created. Um, if we look at our actual flow execution extension storage. It gives us all the metadata here. And then we can click on this and we can see the process folder. Um, now you can see from here, the way that we would reassign something, uh, this action normally wouldn't be here. This is what I created for the purposes of uh, this question. But uh, if we wanted to reassign this, uh, this assignment from the process folder, we would press all and then change assignment. And then we get this form to change the assignment and we can do things like add an optional message, uh, toggle notification, uh, set the priority and a couple of other things. Um, so that can definitely work, but it can be cumbersome to click through uh, a lot of these different process folders, especially if you don't want your end users to actually see the parent folder that these are stored in, but you still want them to be able to reassign these. Um, so what I did is just created a simple user action. So the data structure time wrapper has a configuration folder here. Um, I just use user actions, create user action to create this reassign action. And this is where the meat of everything is happening. Uh, I believe I have this open already, but I can just break the lock. That's fine. Um, so what we're doing here is, uh, and these steps won't be searchable. So let me show you where we would find these. These are the uh, assignment internal service steps. So these are in the toolbox, integration, uh, internal services, and assignment, which is, if I can find it, right here. Yep, and there are lots of steps in here. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm using this get assignments for folder step. Um, and this takes an input of the current folder ID. Uh, and since this is a user action, we, we have the folder ID. So I just got that from, if we look in the data explorer, there's folder right there. Then it has this folder ID property. Um, that'll tell us, uh, to just use the folder ID of the folder we right clicked on for the user action. Um, this is a simple uh, get all accounts step. And I can show you where we found that as well. That's in integration internal services account service. Um, lots of this, like when you want to extend or customize system functionality often will be found here just as a, as a tip um, for anybody that didn't know that integration internal services and then account service, assignment service, uh, different different services like that. Um, so all we're doing is getting a list of all accounts on the system. I pass that into a form. This form just has a drop down that shows all the accounts. When we select an account, we then use the set assignment for account step 
Um, that's also from integration internal services assignment. And what this does is it just takes in a list of account IDs and I'm taking that from the one we selected um, and an assignment ID. And it looks at that assignment ID and changes who's assigned to it. That's all. Um, not incredibly complicated, but those steps, uh, we can't like, we can't capture the functionality of these internal services steps with anything that we could like look at through the toolbox. So it can be hard to find the right tool for the job here. Um, but I can just demo how that works for you here. So this is just a report that shows all my uh, time wrapper flow execution extensions. And you can see this is in a started state. So if I right click on this, uh, what I can do is just reassign. That brings up the form I created. It's really ugly, I'm sorry. I'm not a front end designer. <laughs> um, we just select an account to reassign to from this drop down. I'm just listing everybody. I'm just, I have a test account created for this purpose. So we reassign to test McTest face. And then uh, once that's completed, uh, if I refresh this page, we'll see that the current assigned user changed and that reassign action worked. And I can show you here just to confirm, I have an impersonation set up. So if I impersonate this account and then I go to my inbox, I can see this assignment uh, it was just created here. Uh, it's got a completion date. So let me just prove that this doesn't break the assignment. If I press complete, not a hundred percent sure why I got logged out. That's very unlucky. I think my session just expired um, <laughs> in the middle of the call. Um, give me just a moment. I've got to type my credentials in to get back in. Uh, and I don't want that to be shared on the screen. <laughs> Sorry for the inconvenience there. I believe I can just pause to share actually. Oh, that's great. Yep. Sorry about that, folks. That's the timing of that is tremendously unlucky. I think we are, ex our sessions expire maybe every couple of weeks. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, so if I go back into, am I still impersonating? No, I'm not. So I'm back on my original account. If I look at the dashboard, we can see that this project that I clicked on or this assignment that I clicked on, the assignment's completed. Uh, the state's set to complete. Nothing broke. Everything is uh, as it should be. Um, so... It's a, a lot of parts to just to be able to demonstrate this, but the actual meat of what's happening here, the user action is is fairly simple. And this is pretty bare bones. There's a lot you could do here to improve it. Um, like this set assignment for account step is just taking in one account. We could have um, conditional checks and handling to assign to multiple accounts. Um, plenty of different things we could do there. Um, we could add a data repeater to this form to display all the accounts that the assignment's currently assigned to. We could remove assignees. We could add optional message. Um, there's plenty of different things we could do there. This is just a simple kind of proof of concept. Um, these are some uh, steps that I thought might be useful to include here just for your perusal. Um, and then this, uh, the export of this project, um, believe I can uh, I can just send directly to you um, just the zip of the project. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, if you're watching this uh, in the future, hello from the past. Um, and yeah, just hope that's helpful. Wanted to see if, okay. Um, great, yeah, does anybody else, uh, any questions to go over?
Okay. Yeah. If there are no more questions, uh, then thank you to everybody still here for joining. Um, again, we do these uh, Monday to Thursday from uh, 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, yeah, hope to see you all at the next one and uh, have a great day. Thanks, Ed.